All right. Um, hey, Brendan, how are you going? Not too bad. Good morning. How are you? Good. So Brendan and I have been um, have been playing with this new DJI drone, the Mavic 3 Enterprise, and we wanted to get on a call and to just talk through some of the details and what this might mean for drone pilots out there uh, and give a bit of a deep dive into some of the specifications and yeah, how this new drone um, we expect it to operate in the field. Um, Brendan, just do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Yeah, big time. Uh, working out of Denver, I'm on the hardware support team here. Um, been doing pretty much frontline hardware support for the last about three years. So a lot of drone stuff, a lot of AeroPoint stuff, just being real hands-on uh, with any of the hardware equipment that our customers are using. Awesome. Um, and my name's Rory. I'm one of the founders here at Propeller. So um, actually before Propeller, we were I was studying at university, um, doing a robotics degree and spending a lot of time with drones. So for, for both myself and Brendan, drones are um, a huge passion. And yeah, we figured let's let's get some information out there about this new drone. So Brendan, what are we talking about? Show us, show us the new drone. Yes, we are talking about a new uh, enterprise version of the Mavic 3. So big difference from the normal Mavic 3. Got that RTK top hat that we know we need for, for good, uh, good surveying. But yeah, really just looking at kind of the next evolution of of mapping tech from DJI. We got a lot of components and aspects from previous survey grade drones from DJI all kind of coming together into a pretty small package. So pretty exciting. It's super exciting. So we've had this drone for a couple of weeks now. We've put through 45 or 50 surveys. Um, our, our team is testing all of the accuracy and kind of diving into the details. And we're not quite done that with, with the full accuracy testing yet. So it'll be a little longer until we post an update here that includes some of that information. But let's talk through, Brendan, some of the key um, specs. And I think we should start off with just the the sort of the size and the, the, the profile of the drone. Yeah, so the big noticeable thing, and I do have a Phantom here at my side, but big difference is just that height. Um, you know, from the footprint, looking down below, we're looking at a very similar footprint of both drones. So they're both going to be pretty uh, similarly sighted from the ground, although I think on the blue sky or even on a cloudy day, that, that black color is really going to help you out with the Mavic, getting some eyes on it. But, you know, you really see that difference in that head to head. I'll try to hold up both of them to the camera there. But, yeah. um, you know, Phantom kind of has this barn door aspect to it that causes the wind to uh, hit the sides of it on the broad side and be a little more affected by wind, whereas that's an area that we've seen a lot of huge improvements on the Mavic so far. Brilliant. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, and of course, wind resistance. I mean, some people think that the smaller drones are more subject to wind and they probably are to a degree, but um, with enough power in the propellers and the right profile, you can obviously minimize the impact of that wind. And in all of our testing, and if you look online about the Mavic 3, so of course, this drone is based off the consumer grade version. DJI would have produced thousands of these already, tested batteries, tested motors, tested propellers, tested flight stack. So we're actually looking at a really neat um, sort of revision almost of an existing and mature drone in the market. And that's that's something that's really exciting for us um, here at Propeller. Now, what about these folded arms? How flimsy are they? To, is it gonna fall apart? How small does it fold up to? Yeah, I, I don't think there's gonna be any worries of this thing falling apart, but yeah, definitely one of the huge advantages of this over the Phantom. You had those static arms on the Phantom, gotta take the propellers off, kind of a whole hassle every time you pack it up. Um, but here, we're just talking about folding up some of these arms. Um, big cool thing about the Mavic 2 is similar to the M300, if you've flown one of those, is that you can just leave the propellers on there when you store this thing. So both the uh, propellers and the RTK antenna on this drone can just be stowed in the case. No need to like remove all these different components. Uh, one thing I don't have on here right now is like a little gimbal guard that does come with it when you store it away. But yeah, looking at this, you know, I have a, a water bottle here, same exact size. Wow. So pretty cool how they scale this down um, and still hasn't really kind of negatively impacted any performance that we've seen so far. Brilliant. And let's talk about the little hat on top there. So yeah, for those that know, of course, um, we work as much as we can with RTK enabled drones. So we get that really accurate GPS data. We're able to correct those image positions and produce much more accurate surveys off the back of that. DJI has done something really interesting here, which is 
there's a whole um, array of accessories that you can plug into this drone and they just screw onto the top. Now it's actually a USB-C port inside that's connecting the drone to the antenna. So it's super simple, screw it off. Um, there's the port there and it just kind of sits right on neatly. And of course, once that's plugged in, you're gonna get equivalent performance to something like the P4i in terms of GPS signal strength um, and being able to yeah, produce that fuel frequency data stream. Um, Brendan, what about the case? Case, yeah, let me mix a room here. Um, <laughs> and this, was, this was something that the P4i obviously came in a foam case, um, yep. which is a good case, but it was subject to getting damaged. So big upgrade here, okay? Yep, probably looks massive from this angle. Um, this is actually a smaller profile than the P4R big styrofoam case. So it is hard, hard plastic all the way around it. Um, let me get it open for you. Hopefully the angle works out, but a lot of room in here. Um, there's five slots for batteries and you can keep one in the drone while it's stored. Uh, everything running off of this is very simple. Everything's USB-C. So there's not all these crazy cables you gotta keep track of for firmware updates or, um, you know, charging the batteries, it's all running off USB-C, which is just so easy, so simple. Can you show us one of the batteries quickly? Yeah, of course. And the USB-C charging. And that'll mean, of course, your laptop power supply can charge um, one of these batteries, right? Where's the USB-C port on that battery? Yeah, so this is the battery itself. When we're talking about USB-C, we're talking about that dock where you can there slide in at a time. Uh, pop those in and on the back there it is that USB-C. So then what you're also going to get in the case is one of these just USB-C adapters. It's got two spots on there. Yep. So what you can do is have one cable charging, you know, three on the dock and the other cable, this is a cool thing, you can have the other cable just plugged right into the back of the drone and it's actually going to charge that battery that's inserted in the drone. Uh, so wow. you can really basically knock out four um, in a pretty quick amount of time. That's incredible. So you can charge four batteries at the same time. Um, the dock is going to do the classic DJI move of like charging one at a time and moving to the yeah. next fullest one. But yeah, you could, you know, essentially set up your plug-in overnight and wake up with four fully charged batteries, which is awesome. Epic. Um, that is very handy. I, um, I've, I've lost those cables before, actually. Uh, can you talk to us quickly about the batteries? Yeah, batteries, we're looking at 5,000 milliamp hour. Uh, for flight performance, uh, we're really seeing around closer to 27 minutes when we're doing mapping flights or when we're doing uh, you know, linear flights, that kind of thing. You know, DJI is kind of advertising a 45 minute flight time. We haven't quite found the magic recipe to crack that number. We're seeing closer to that 25 to 30 range. Um, but yeah, really impressed with the batteries. Otherwise, they take about a good 90 minutes to charge from completely flat to the full. Yep. Uh, so yeah, looking good. Okay. Um, that's really good to hear. Uh, and they probably charge fast, right, up to say 80% and then they trickle in, right? So if you're, if you're desperate, you could, you could pull one off. Um, last couple of things before we move on. So let's talk through um, the collision avoidance and the ADSB sensor. Yeah, totally. Um, big upgrade is that, yeah, Mavic 3 and specifically our enterprise, it's got that omnidirectional vision system. So a lot, a lot smarter, a lot more comprehensive when it comes to avoiding those crashes or, or any of those obstacles in your way. Um, yeah. Can you and then, just pull that out yeah. for us. Yeah. Got to get some bolded again. Good. Yeah, you're going to see a number of different sensors. There's also some like downward facing lights that you can enable. But okay. you're going to get sensors pretty much all over the craft. You got the two rear ones here, a yep. um, couple front ones, yeah, a couple on top. And then you also have that uh, beacon, really um, high visibility anti collision lighting. Oh, brilliant. So um, there's two on top, two on the back, two on the front, two down, and a downward facing um, distance sensor for, for landing. Right. I don't know how they process all of that data on board. It's, <laughs> it's pretty remarkable, hey? It is. Um, and what does the ADS-B sensor mean now as well as the regulations are starting to change? Yeah, so, so the exciting thing we've heard from DJI is that they're expecting this specific drone, uh, Mavic 3 Enterprise, to be uh, one of the first drones like off the shelf to be remote ID ready. So, you know, a lot of the recent uh, DJI drones have that air sense or that ADS-B 
uh, in, but not a lot of them have that ADSB out uh, built in yet. So uh, yeah, we're expecting that this drone will probably ship immediately without remote ID, but then they're gonna implement it uh, with a firmware update, uh, you know, closer to the requirement. Got it. Yeah, so that means we're future-proof now and um, hopefully it makes for safer skies, which we're all interested in, of course. Definitely. All right, let's move on to cameras, right? Bit of a hot topic. Um, what are we looking at? Yeah, so we got the big one on the bottom. That's that four third inch. Uh, that's your 20 megapixel. Uh, this is the one that has that mechanical shutter. That's gonna be, we're gonna be depending on that one for all these mapping surveys that you'll be collecting out the field. And then on the top, that's what they're calling like the tele sensor. It's got that crazy zoom on it. Um, yeah. It has seven times optical, but then it's also going up to 56 digital. Um, I guess, you know, bit of a, Thing to mention there obviously the higher the, the zoom there the the worse those images are probably going to look so while it's crazy impressive that they're getting up to 56 times um you know i wouldn't really be blown away by the quality of those images quite yet yeah it doesn't mean much that that digital zoom essentially you can stretch the pixels as much as you want and they yeah. just get fuzzier and fuzzier right yeah um but so so i want to talk about the mechanical shutter for a minute because it's that's one of the big upgrades on the consumer version so the consumer version has the same size sensor but it's it's a rolling shutter um now the mechanical shutter that we've got here for those that, that aren't aware as you can imagine these drones are flying through the air at about 10 meters a second 36 k's an hour it's probably 20 miles an hour average survey flight speed so each time it's taking photos the drone's actually covering a tiny bit of ground while the, that sensor is open. And you want a really fast shot so that the, the amount of the distance moved bet, you know, between the time that that sensor opens and the time or the, sh the shutter opens and the shutter closes, you want that distance to be as small as possible. And it's really important because you've got this GPS antenna on top, which is getting you know, millisecond precise timing and positions. And we're trying to synchronize well, DJI is trying to synchronize exactly when that shutter is open to when it samples the GPS. And so the problem with rolling shutter drones or drones that don't have a global shutter is that they read the sensor more slowly and not sort of instantaneously. And that means the top left pixel, right, which is the first pixel to be read, gets read at a, in a different position to the bottom right pixel, which is the last pixel to be read. So it's you know, it's kind of scanning each line one at a time. So it's really important that we've got global shutters so that we can reduce the errors coming through the surveys. Um, and this drone has what we need. Of course, the Phantom 4 had what we need as well. Um, but this is what's making it kind of enterprise and mapping grade alongside that RTK antenna. Um, Brendan, as well, like I'm led to believe that the, the drone can take photos more quickly than the old drone. Can you talk through that as well as the implications for a survey? Yeah, definitely. So we've been playing around with basically planning um, missions in the same place, uh, kind of using like duration as a constant. So if we plan like a 20 minute flight on the Phantom with our ideal PPK settings, do the same thing on this new Mavic 3 Enterprise, you know, same duration, same settings, uh, the amount of area it can cover in that same duration is, is pretty wild to think about. We're seeing about like 90 acres for like a 20 minute flight uh, on the Phantom using our ideal settings. Again, ideal settings, 20 minute flight on the Mavic, we're seeing about 130 to 140 acres. So um, if my math's correct, that's like a 40% upgrade immediately just in the same amount of time. It's just able to capture those photos so much quicker, which means you're gonna be spending a lot less time out there in the field. Yeah, this is super important. So this new drone can capture a photo every 0.7 of a second right? And it can do that without blur. It can do that without the buffers starting to fill up. What that means is the drone can fly faster, right? Still capturing photos because the Phantom needed to slow down the flight speed so that it could capture the photos at the right interval, right? Every, what, two seconds, was it, Brendan? Something like that. Yeah. And it would start to, you know, fill up over time, the buffer. So now it can go bang, 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 bang. And that means they can speed up the flight speed and that and plus the longer battery life that we're gonna get, we'll see a really material increase in the amount of area you can cover um, area mapped with, with one of these drones. A um, Couple other things here as well. So there's a few new flight modes. We've, we've got the ability to take 360 panoramas and it stitches those on board. Brendan, talk to us about the controller um, interface. Are you happy with that? 
Yeah, I haven't actually showed the controller yet. Good call. Um, yeah, so what this is, there, there's already a controller out on the market called the DJI, I think, RC Pro. Yeah. It's kind of an upgrade you can get for the consumer Mavic 3. Uh, we're basically looking at the same hardware here, except uh, this ships with DJI Pilot 2, which for me is like the absolute uh, bee's knees when it comes to DJI software. I think anyone who's spent a lot of time with the Phantom 4 RTK and that GS RTK app on board, um, after all these years, it's still just honestly pretty unpolished. There's typos, there's uh, extremely unclear bugs that have gone years without being fixed. Um, yeah, DJI Pilot 2 is it. It's just so much smarter. Um, for someone like me who's helping people on the phone every day fly these things, uh, this is like the RC we dream of. This is the app that really makes our jobs a lot easier. It's really going to make it a lot easier to fly on the field. It's just uh, almost an upgrade in every single area. It's, it's great. That's great. But one thing you were saying to me earlier is that the, the controller itself, where previously we had an external battery, now it's yeah. built in. Oh. Yeah, exactly. That's, like, that's one of the, the one, like, you know, maybe negatives or step backs I can see with this controller. I can kind of see what DJI is doing, but if we look at the back of it, uh, if you're familiar with, like, the M300 controller, you're going to know that you have both that embedded USB-C like rechargeable battery and then you have that option to slap like an emergency uh, you know RC battery on the back for some extra juice and you can keep kind of hot swapping those. Uh, yeah. You can't do that on this controller. You're basically stuck with that embedded uh, USB-C battery. So you know really what we can recommend at this point is if you're worried about battery life on the controller out in the field, uh, you know USB-C power bank, something that you use to charge your phone on the go is going to work for this as well. But another interesting point that we're going to be waiting to hear more on is on the very bottom, you have all those connections, but then on the far right and far left, you have some little screw holes. Oh, yeah. DJ open that some third parties are going to start making some like, you know, after um, market battery attachments to kind of help top that up. So we'll see how quickly those hit. Um, but for the moment, that lack of like a emergency hot swappable battery on the back is definitely something I'm going to miss on this one. So we're getting like five or six hours of battery life from the controller, right? Yeah, and that's like full-blown brightness too. Which is thing. We've been out there in the really bright Colorado sun, pretty high heat. Um, we've done some pretty long days of flying on this thing without it going down. So that part does make me feel better. Okay, so we've got about a day's battery life, but you're going to want to charge that every day before, before heading out. Exactly. You're yeah. going to want to make sure it's topped up. I mean, because it's USB-C, again, exactly. it's going to be just to have a, a car charger. Almost everyone's got one for their phone anyway. So, yeah, not a huge headache, but definitely something to point out. And because it's shipping with USB-C, of course, it's got those two ports. You can charge, you know, the batteries and the control at the same time. I'm so happy about the USB-C revolution overall for computers, for phones, and now for drones. Um, it's very exciting. Uh, okay, I mean, I think we've covered we've covered this drone, Brendan. It might be time to wrap it up. Yeah, I'm uh, very much looking forward to this uh, kind of being out in the wild. It's going to be an exciting day. Yeah, and for those, right, Brendan introduced himself briefly at the beginning, but um, we've got more than 2,000 Phantom 4 RTKs being flown by our customers every month. And Brendan and his team support those on a daily basis. So as, as expert as they come, um, we're talking to Brendan. Now, for this drone, of course, we're excited as a company to to have um, all of these little incremental upgrades that we think add, in, add up to a, a really credible good good looking solution for um, the next generation of, of drone maps that are going to start coming through it's it's, uh, it's it's exciting times thanks Definitely. all right thank you so much, i'll see you around bye